that they would fall asleep when they when he most needed their presence that they would deny abandon and in one case betray him and the words in our text are a powerful powerful reminder to persist in prayer and not lose heart no matter what the circumstances they were an exhortation a warning and encouragement to his disciples 50 years later to Luke's audience and to us all these centuries later. In the parable, there are two characters, a widow and a judge. In the Jewish faith, caring for the marginalized, for those who could not care for themselves, such as widows and orphans and aliens, that was a core value of the faith. And according to Deuteronomy, judges were to render just decisions for the people, to pursue justice so that the people might live and occupy the land that God was going to give to them. Justice for the marginalized was and still is a big part of God's plan. Well, in our text of this morning we find a judge who isn't just. He doesn't fear God and he doesn't respect the people he was called to care for. What a horrible, awful judge. May you never, may I never come before one of them in a court of law. And we have a powerless widow, quite possibly being treated unfairly by a lender, who shamelessly and persistently and boldly advocates to the judge for justice. Listen to how the message translation puts this. He never gave her the time of day. But this went on and on. And as this happened, he said to himself, I care nothing what God thinks. I care even less about what people think. But because this widow won't quit badgering me, I'd better do something and see that she gets justice. Otherwise, I'm going to end up beaten black and blue by her pounding. The message translation often puts things in pretty literal and imaginative terms. But in this case, the, the translator, Eugene Peterson, isn't taking artistic freedom. The Greek is literally, this woman is going to give me a black eye. <laughs> Imagine a little powerless, older, I imagine her kind of decrepit widow, no power whatsoever. And the judge thinking, if I don't give in to her, I'm going to get a black eye. So Jesus says this, do you hear what that judge, corrupt as he is, is saying? So what makes you think God won't step in and work justice for his chosen people? who continue to cry out for help. Won't he stick up for them? I assure you, he will. He will not drag his feet. But how much of that kind of persistent faith will the Son of Man find on the earth when he returns? That's precisely where Luke's readers found themselves in the year 85, Common Era, and exactly where we find ourselves today. She's rewarded by the unjust judge simply to get her off his back. And Jesus praises her persistence. If an unjust judge gives in to a relentless and persistent widow, then how much more does our God, who is just and attentive, hear and answer our prayers? much like that prayer in the rock that I found for my sister. Prayer is an absolutely essential spiritual practice. It helps to strengthen our resolve and it buoys our hope during the journey of discipleship. Prayer is an act of faith. Dorothy Soleil, a German theologian who followed in the footsteps of Dietrich Bonhoeffer, wrote this. 
Prayer does not lead to a new vision of God, but a different relationship to the world, one that has borrowed the eyes of God. Prayer allows us to pray with our eyes wide open, as opposed to always needing to be closed, to be fully present to the many injustices and the lack of mercy that people face every day. It allows us to pray, engage in prayers of solidarity that go beyond our own personal petitions. Rabbi, Rabbi um, <laughs> I have a typo here, and my, my word got corrected, rabbit. <laughs> rabbit Joshua Herschel, I apologize, Rabbi, <laughs> said, I felt like my legs were praying when I participated in the 1965 Civil Rights March from Selma to Montgomery. Prayer itself can literally embody action. One of the complaints that non-Christians and, and Christians who are tired of simply kind of, you know, trite answers are, are upset about is that we will say, we'll send our thoughts and our prayers, you know, when there's another gun shooting or when there's a war or when there's a hurricane that strikes. Thoughts and prayers are one thing, but prayer must be so much more. Not a once and a done deal, but an ongoing action. The wi widow doesn't give up. In our ever-present God, who hears the cries of the weary, authentic prayer is and becomes faith in action. It is a constant believing and working for a more just and a more humane and a more merciful world that reflects God's own mercy and justice. Karl Barth said this, we must pray with the newspaper in one hand and the Bible in the other. St. Augustine wrote, pray as though everything depended on God and work as though everything depended on you. Jesus' depiction of the widow is a God-endorsed invitation to engage in the relentless pursuit of justice and mercy with our prayers and with our actions. Jesus asks at the end of the passage, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faithfulness on the earth? Those words have challenged and inspired Luke's readers 50 years after Jesus who were facing hardship. How much more challenge and inspiration do we need nearly 2,000 years later? Prayer is communion with God. Prayer is listening and being with God and asking. Prayer is a participant sport not a passive sitting in the bleachers kind of a thing. It is an act of persistent faith that unites us heart, soul, body, and strength with God as we love others and God as God loves us in the world. When we persist, justice and mercy win. In the end, we know who the victor is. The victor is God. The people of the coal at last who installed this window, some of them didn't survive to see what was going to happen after World War II. And yet, this church continues to be a place of faith and a place of prayer and a place where we put our prayers in action for the needs of the community around us, for the people who need justice, those who can't afford a home to live in, for the people who need clothing. And so we have the, the Woodstock um, clothes uh, 
I'm going to call it a pantry and I'm going to be wrong. The clothes closet. It's collecting food and giving it to the Woodstock Food Pantry so that people have food. And prayer is also what we do in this congregation when we care for one another, when we greet each other and are sincerely concerned about each other's life, when we live in community, praying and supporting each other and our world every single day. We have been here, well, we haven't, but this church, this body of Christ has been here for 274 years. Let us pray and act our way into 275. May it be so. Amen. stand as you are able for the affirmation of faith, which is in our bulletin. We trust in God, the Creator Spirit, who moved upon the face of the deep at the beginning of creation, who created all that is, and who spoke through the prophets of all. We trust in Jesus Christ, in whom God's Spirit was poured in fullness and in power that the whole creation might be restored and unified, and promised that the Spirit would come and fill the faithful with power to witness to the mighty love of God. We await on that Spirit today with longing hearts, seeking to be empowered to the witness of God's love with fresh words and courageous actions of love and hope. Glory be to God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. You may be seated. Before we go to this time of prayer, I just want to simply ask that you would look and take home with you the bulletin and remember in prayer the people and the situations that are listed on the back of our bulletin. In our country, we in particular want to continue to pray for the people who have been affected by Hurricane Ian, as well as people who continue to die from gun violence. And we want to remember Faye Cullors on her special day, which is October 24th. Um, her 
daughter Shelly and the family gave these incredible um, altar flowers in her honor and we're um, happy that you are here and grateful for you and say you're probably never going to talk to me again. <laughs> <laughs> so I have some reconciliation to do. There's also an announcement in the bulletin. Um, we think about the devastating floods in our country, but the, the nation of Pakistan that, has, that does not have the resources that we have have been inundated with flood water. And our Stewardship and commission, Commissions Committee does have an announcement in there if you would like to make a donation to that cause. It's also very, very important. Please join with me in prayer. Holy God, we confess that sometimes we are competitive. We want to know who will be best and first, and we hope it will be one of us. You call us special, and we interpret that to mean the best. And we feel that we are entitled to all that is due to the best. Jesus reminded us that the best of us will be the servants, will be those who are willing to help and witness to others, not for their own honor, but for God's honor and praise. Far too long, we have decided that we know what is best for the whole world. We want to run the whole show, but we don't always want to listen to you, God. You want us to bring peace, to listen to the needs and wants of others. And sometimes we want to impose our wills on others. We have gotten way off track of discipleship. So bring us back, patient God. Shake the dust of thinking we know it all from us and nourish us with humility and joy. Help us to be the kind of disciples that serve you faithfully. And Lord, in this week ahead, may we pray persistently. May thoughts of you and thoughts of those in need and thoughts of praise in thoughts of love and calls for justice be in our minds and in our hearts in everything that we do. May we embody prayer. We ask these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. One of the things that we have been doing since summertime here is giving an opportunity for people who would like to say thanks to God for a birthday or an anniversary or an A on a spelling test or a friend who has um, cared deeply for them. And you are invited to do that now if you would like to. And if not, then we will continue with the doxology for our offering. Please stand as we sing together.
and everything that we are is because of you. And so we offer these to you, asking that you would use them and that you would use us to bring about your justice and your love in this community and to spread it to the world. We pray this with thanksgiving in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. And as a reminder of prayer, our closing hymn is number 478, number 478, Sweet Hour of Prayer. <laughs>
Yeah. 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 